it is unwise after eating a fruit to throw away good seed when it is in your divine and godly purpose to be fruitful and multiply according to the will of Yahweh Bashem. Yahweh the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The burning bush on Mount Horeb. Mount Horeb, also known as Mount Sinai, is a formidable place with the highest peaks in the entire peninsula. It was in this sacred place that God revealed himself to me in an extraordinary way. While tending the sheep, I saw a bush burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. God said, do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. God said, do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. 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 With fear and awe, I realized I was in the presence of the Almighty God. He identified himself as the God of my fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Back at it again with another exhortation out of the inspiration of our Kodash Abba, Bahashim Mashiach Malak Yahweh Shai, Wa Kodash Racha, giving all glory, all honor, and all praises unto the Most High Heavenly Father, and Barakathom to the Akim and Akwathium, you know, who are being diligent in his truth. And as a minister of the new covenant, I want to make it known, plain and clear, it is all about the kingdom. Alrighty, alrighty, family. So to go further, you know, within this exhortation, you know, um, first thing first, I want to make it known. You know, for the brothers and sisters, you know, to take notes. You really want to take notes and, 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 and let the spirit of the Lord be who he is, you know, within these perilous times. You know, um, you know, and, 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 and uh, basically, I'm just I'm just basically, you know, uh, making it known, plain and clear upon tables. You want to be sensitive to the Rakha Kwadash or the Kwadash Rakha, the spirit of holiness, or if you want to say the Holy Spirit. You want to be sensitive to the spirit of holiness in these perilous times because then you will acknowledge the importance of remaining in the presence of the Lord and the benefits and, and being within the presence of the Lord. Meaning you got to be inwardly in his walk and not outwardly in his walk. You know what I'm saying? You don't have time to, to be within the things that lines up to contentions. You, you only have time to do what you got to do in growing in the Lord and letting your lifestyle speak, thus saith the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Letting your lifestyle speak and decree, thus saith the Lord. Because a picture has a thousand words and more. So imagine the motion of pictures and what will be surfacing out of the hearts of others that will be of either dark or either it will be of light. But what we're aiming towards more in his walk is to help you know uh brothers and sisters you know Akim and Agwathim to lean more into that light because the more you abide in the light of the Lord the more you're going to understand some things from an angle that will cause you to to be like yo you know I, I really need to, to get myself together you know what I'm saying I thought I knew it all but I really don't you know, it, it's just things that will come to you, not from a place as in like so much as in like, oh, you don't deserve the mercies of the Lord. It'll literally, it'll literally come from a place that that 
you'll bear witness to how the Lord is trying to groom you to be appreciative of his mercies. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that one more time. How the Lord is trying to groom you to be appreciative of his mercies. You see? So while the enemy wants you to be distracted and get caught up in distractions, and then when things don't turn out to be the way how you would think things would be, and then something surfaces and the enemy throws it your way, and then you start beating yourself up, you know what I'm saying? Beating yourself up more than what you should be doing and, and not acknowledging that, hey man, the only reason why you're doing what you're doing to yourself is because you were led astray, you know? You gotta have, I learned in this walk, you gotta be balanced in, a, in the Lord's mercies. You can't take the Lord's mercies as a token to do whatever you want. And you can't go about the Lord's mercies to the point that you, you be so terrified to, to the point where it's like, yo, I don't even want to go outside because I may look at a woman's booty and God may put me to death. Like, you know what I'm saying? It, and now, granted, you, you know, discipline is key. But nevertheless, in your way of falling short and the Lord bringing it to you where you where it's like, you know, you fell short. It, it, it's in those moments where the mercies of the Lord, when he's applying it to you, is, is to give you an opportunity to do better. You know what I'm saying? Where you are shunning all the things that are connected to pride. You're shunning all the things that are connected to the works of darkness. You're shunning all the things that are of uh, self, you know, self-destruction, shall I say. You know? And what keeps you in that place where you're able to be inspired? And in your way of being inspired, you're able to inspire is through this. Let's get right to it. John chapter 4 and verse 21 through 24. Um, Jesus, meaning Yahweh Shah, saith unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye should neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship. What? Shall worship her. What? Shall worship. Come on, family. You said, but the hour cometh. And now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. You see, for the father seeketh such to worship him. Seeking what? Such to worship him. Right. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Listen, family, this 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 walk, which is of a, a narrow path and, and it's like, yo, one person at a time, meaning everything is of order. Hey, man, this ain't for everybody. Even this message alone is not for everybody. But what I can make known in this message if it is resonating with you, let the Lord get the glory, meaning let go and let God do what? Let go and let God. All right. So in this part one, right, as you will see, our worship is light. That light overcomes darkness. That what? That light overcomes darkness. So our worship, right, is light, right? And that light is what overcomes darkness. So it shows you the dark point, the dark things that we bear witness to within our lives. Rather, it's what you are battling with when it comes down to the flesh and how it wars with the spirit and you bearing witness as a soul, as you are cleaving to the spirit on the things that the flesh do at times that lines up to being irritating, where overall that irritation lines up to vexation. And it's not just from that angle right but it's also what you are uh, uh bearing witness to, to when it comes from those who are connected to you it can be family members it can be uh, uh those who have been friends or it can be just anybody who is connected to you and the beauty within that vexation is only reminding reminding you how much you are a light at a moment in the midst of this darkness. That's all it, it, it that's all it is. You see what I'm saying? Because your light is 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 emanating in places that 
Satan thought that he had authority over. And when you're growing in the presence of God, you start to acknowledge how his authority is over Satan's. You see, you'd be surprised what Satan has implanted in the hearts of those who are around you, where it will make you to be like, yo, I, ain't, I can't trust nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody with PTSD. Seriously. Like, yo, I can't trust nobody. Even the slightest movement of being shifty. You know what I'm saying? And these are things that may be burdensome to others because they can't cope with that reality. But to those who lean on to the Lord and they bear witness to the Lord coming through for them and, 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 and they bear witness to other things about the Lord. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not trying to say too much because you'd be surprised on what things may surface and others may take it to heart and they may try to use it up against you as a weapon. We're in a spiritual warfare. You see what I'm saying? So this warfare that we got to acknowledge as worshipers, right, is to give us insight that our objective is to help the minds of our people to draw closer in the presence of the Lord as worshipers, true worshipers, those who are in tune with the inward man. Look at this, Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 34. Blessed is the man that heareth me, that what that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors, waiting at the what? The posts of my doors. This all goes in place in, how can I say it? I really want to say this all goes in a place of one who is desiring to dwell in that place with the Lord, to be in that place with the Lord, to be one with the Lord. And when the mindset is in that in that in that place, meaning when a heart is set to be in that place, vexation comes across because the light that is within you is growing. The more you are, you know how they say, uh, no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain, right? That's what it is like when it comes to this truth. You see, and it's the same way with the world. So it's like it's better to be in the truth. I Meaning, it's, it's better to to be uh, uh suffering for the Lord than to be suffering for the world. That's only influencing you to be in pride in what is of idolatry, where you make your own self to be an idol and you desire for people to worship you. Where when you speak, right, even if it's uh, 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 of swelling words your, your, your objective is, is to be In the eyes of others As in like I'm this type of person And it's like the person that you want to Project yourself to be out of, out of authenticness Is one who knows that they need God You see One who is in a place that's like they don't need God Or they're not living a lifestyle That is of God but want to try to benefit from God because they go to camp or because they go to church or because they do things as in like, Lord, I did this. Lord, I did that. Lord, I, 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 I. Them are going to be the ones who the Lord is going to despise and reject. Turn away from thee. I do not know you. Ye workers of inequity. You can sin up against God and you can sin up against your neighbor. This is how heavy this walk is. How scary it can be. How spooky it can be, shall I say. And this is why we got to abide in the presence of God. But you cannot abide in the presence of God if you who are a soul is not trying to cleave to the worshiper that is within you. That is ultimately a gift. A gift from the Most High. Blessed is the man that heareth me. Meaning being in tune with the voice of the Lord. The vibration, the frequency of God. Watching daily at my gates. Waiting at the posts of my doors. It's people I know that do watch me on this YouTube, but they never comment. They will never make mention of themselves. And I know I know some of them are family members. And this is the truth. I know this. But nevertheless, to God be the glory. Because my heart's desire is that family, 
those who are connected to me to get redeemed by the Lord. And it only comes through repentance. Remember, our worship is light. That light overcomes darkness. Let's go further. Psalms 119 verse 9 through 11. Wherewith all shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Taking what? Heed to thy word. How are you going to take heed to his word? Proverbs 8 and 34. Blessed is the man that heareth me. That what? That heareth me. Heareth me. Right? So going back into Psalms 119 verse 9 through 11. Wherewith all shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. You see how the word is connected to the voice? Or how the word is connected to source? How the word... The word is a vibration. It's connected to a frequency that's coming from source. Right? And let's go further in verse 10. With my whole heart have I sought thee. My what? My whole heart. That's how you become cleansed. That's how you become purified. I sought thee. See, the wise will always be amongst the wise. You see, the kings be amongst kings. So remember this, you got carnal kings and you got spiritual kings, holy kings, spiritual holy kings. You got carnal kings, meaning those who lean to their own understanding. And you got spiritual, enlightened, holy kings, meaning you got those who are earthly with wisdom and you got those who are from a heavenly perspective who are connected to an internal place when it comes down to wisdom. You can read this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. But nevertheless, with my whole heart have I sought thee. You can't seek the Lord if you fill with pride. Oh, let me not wonder from thy commandments. You cannot keep commandments without the spirit of the Lord. You cannot. Verse 11, thy word have I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against thee. That I what? That I might not sin against thee. Meaning that I might not displease you. So I listen, I seek the Lord. It's like basically, I don't want to say I alone, but us seeking the Lord wholeheartedly, which is ultimately being sincere. Where your sincerity in this walk with the Lord is like, yo, I don't, I do not want to displease you, Lord. Which is having your heart to be open to the Lord's way of living. Regardless of what your position is like in this lifetime. You can, you can have it within yourself to be poor. Right? And kingdom manifest and, and you beyond rich, rich. Beyond rich, rich. Real talk. You got those that live their, their, their lives and they boast in their lives and all of what they got in this lifetime. But the, the, hey, they got to they gotta atone for that when, on the day of judgment, man. When it comes to the Lord, the Lord already said it even to the rich young man who had many possessions, right? If it was anything that he was going to give away, and I believe this, if you meditate on that story, it will all be for the glory of his name. Like when he do something for somebody, it's going to be the glory of his name, not the Lord. And he, when he do do it, he going to do it to be seen by men. He or she, you know what I'm saying? And the reason why I'm stating this is because you got to know when men trying to put work in, and where God stands at and putting in work. Why do you think the unseen God is still unseen? And he's only seen by those who are having his eyes. His ears. You see what I'm saying? Cleanse me, O Lord. Psalms 27 and verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple and is what in his temple saying I want to dwell in that place where the father is at you see and out of the wisdom of the Lord I know his word does not return void right so what the Lord is making known the place that he dwells at is not made by man's hands which gives us a greater insight on where that secret place is at Though we may hear it by word, but it's different when the Lord is ordering your steps into that place. Because when you try to enter into that place with no guidance, 
you go you going to end up remaining in darkness and usually those who are remaining in darkness are those who are trying to enter into the kingdom of god some other way you want to know the beauty of the lord's mercies because if you do bear witness to that place don't you know you are you are croak you will die don't you know that the because the the lord himself is holy and though by being in the body of Yahweh Shah, right? Though we are in the body of Hamashiach, in the body of Christ, and this is real. He himself is like, you know how when somebody looking at the sun and the sun can bother your eyes, right? Because the light is intense. But then when you get these glasses and there is some shade, you can look at the presence of the sun and in and, 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 and its fullness to a certain degree. Right. Why? Because now you're able to see things as they are. That, that That's where Hamashiach stands at with us. He's he's trying to help us to see where we are and, and, and where the Lord, meaning his Lord, is trying to lead us at. This is this is where you, you get insight on how the Lord is that lamp and how the Lord is that light along our path. You see that light, like the yellow brick road. Ease on down, ease on down the road. And that's my favorite movie too, The Wiz. Y'all should check that out. It came out in 1978 with Diana Ross and uh, Michael Jackson. I actually got a lesson that I wanted to share too on that because there's a lot of subliminal messages, but that'll be for another time. But nevertheless, you know, overall, Lord's willing to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple, right? So it's, it's you growing to desire the Lord. Psalms 23 and 6, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What? And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Why? Because the Lord is surely to give you what your heart's desires are as long as it's pertaining to his will. You see? So surely goodness and mercy, that goodness goodness goes with what? Romans 8 and 28. All things work out for the good of those who love God. And those that love God grows to understand how the Lord is merciful, which makes them to want to exemplify the Lord's mercies on others. Like the scriptures has made it known, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, man. You see? You'd be surprised how many people really hate you for real, for real. They smile on your face. They may conversate and talk with you. But deep down inside, they got something really against you. They got some darkness. And they, they can be around you for a moment. But when the presence of God begins to work, it, it, it causes them to be, it, it, you know, within their hearts to be like grieved in a sense. Where, because they're being exposed because of what they're cleaving to that they know that is of darkness. Or what they did not know, but what the Lord is revealing to them inwardly within them as a soul you see for them to pay attention to for them to acknowledge for them to shun to turn away from and take hold of wholeheartedly you see what you do unto his little ones you doing unto him this is real and you know who his little ones are because they are worshipers of god all right Psalms 91 and 9, because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. You see, Luke 17 and 21, neither shall they say lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Dwelling with God in Hamashiach. That's the overall point. Psalm 65 and 4, blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causes to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. Remember, the scriptures made it known we have not chosen him, but he have chosen us. Come on. That's beautiful that he may dwell in thy courts to dwell in the presence of God. You see, we shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. The what? The goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. That goodness goes with what? Psalms 23 and 6, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, which all goes into what? That habitation, which is what? That secret place. 
right? Second Samuel two, second Samuel 22 and verse seven. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God. And he, and he did hear my voice out of his temple. Who is his temple? Hamashiach. This is why the new covenant is important. You see, the new covenant is extremely important because it's an oath. You out of, your, out of all the days of your living, dedicating yourself to the Lord wholeheartedly. You see, let's go further. And my cry did enter into his ear. Why? Because the Lord, right? Or should I say our Lord is interceding on our behalf when it comes down to his Lord. You see, the more we're taking in the bread that coming from heaven, even the wine that coming from heaven, the more we're going to bear witness to the glories and the manifestations inwardly when it comes down to the faith. Right? All within the presence of God. Acts 17 and verse 24. God that God that made the world and all things therein. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Made with what? Hands. Plain and clear upon tables. And y'all take these scriptures down. Copy these scriptures down. So, all of this, right, which is you fighting a good fight of faith. You continuing on running the race. You pressing, you know what I'm saying, in the presence of God. Through fasting, praying, all of that, right? This is all a part of you desiring the Lord, right? And in that desire, the Lord is making way within you more and more through the worshiper that is within you. So you who are a soul would know what to do and how to go about it according to thus saith the Lord's way and what is lining up to the Father's will, right? You start to become what? As all that what is of a process is taking place. You're becoming a new creature but what creature are you uh uh foreshadowing what creature we know ultimately is hamashiach but what in hamashiach are you foreshadowing you see as you are abiding within the presence of god mm. let's go into it ezekiel 10 and verse 20 it said this is the living creature that i saw under the god of israel the God of who? The God of Israel. Right? The God of the Israelites. You see, our people, right? By the river of Chebar. And I knew that they were the cherubims. The what? The cherubims. Just like when you think about the Ark of the Covenant, right? And when you bear witness to the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, right? On top of it, it's a mercy seat. But the mercy seat itself, which is saturated with the Father's mercies, right? And within the Father's mercies is also His presence. But within the presence, there is angels who still have to cover themselves up, though they are holy. Which is showing you how the presence of God is beyond what words can describe and what it is. He's beyond holy. But these cherubims are a shadow of something. That those who are inwardly in this walk. Who desire to be within the presence of God. Out of all the days of their living. Will bear witness to this. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, in Hamashiach, in the anointed one, the what? The anointed one. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Why? Because your desire. And that desire is something that has been placed within you by the Lord. You see? The Lord has made it known plain and clear how he has put his laws within our inward parts, within our hearts. You see? He put it within our hearts, within our inward parts. You see? 
which is ultimately giving us insight on what his will is about and what we ought to desire. And acknowledge that what we do desire is connected to what is within our hearts, which is a part of his will, which is a part of the manifestations of his glories. Not just glory, but glories. Behold, all things are become new. You see? The manifestations. So, overcome by staying in his presence. Walk in the spirit of holiness. So, I'm not going to, as you can see down there, the part two. But I'm not going to go into part two yet. You know, um, just flowing through the spirit of the Lord. I have... Uh, about like five parts to this here But the Lord was leading me to share this message Right And Amen Let the Lord be the one to get all the glory The honor and praises within it Nevertheless God is a spirit And they that worship him Must worship him in spirit and in truth Shalom Shalom Shalom